to God first. Now we're in discernment, part three, uh, a message entitled, Ye, They, We. And today we're going to actually get into uh, the passages of scripture. Uh, uh, John says, ye are of God, little children. They are of the world. We are of God. John uses a us against them construct because let me tell you when you come to Jesus Christ and and uh, and you're following the Lord the Bible speaks of people who are despisers of those that are good despisers of them that are good and so the war is on and when you when you make your stand for Christ you're also making your stand against the devil and against the world. Now you're gonna be blessed as we continue this message. Thanks for joining us here on God First. Praise the Lord. You cannot do both. The devil knows how to make what he has attractive, alluring. Satan knows how to make his stuff that he offers. Satan knows how to make it make sense. He said to Eve, Yea, have the Lord said that if you eat of this tree, you're going to die. He brought it up. Eve said, Well, no. Well, he said, We can't eat of it. Uh, less, less, uh, we can't even touch it unless we die. And the devil said to Eve, and I can hear him, You will not surely die. The truth is, I mean, the devil said it back then. The truth is, Ella Wooden is trying to hold you back. That's all it is. Pastor is trying to hold you back. God's holding out on you. The Lord knows that the moment you eat of this tree, your eyes will come open. And you will, you will know good and evil. God's trying to keep things from you. And when the devil got through talking to Eve, Eve, before the devil talked to her, Eve looked at the tree and saw a tree that she didn't want to eat from, nor did she want to touch. When Satan got through with it, she, she looked at the tree and saw that the tree was good for food, good to the taste, and a tree to be desired to make one wise. Satan knows how to take excrement, wrap it up, and make it seem attractive and sell you that. This is why I feel a coldness and it ain't just the air. Y'all give, give me a report. Anybody over my shoulder ain't saying amen, you let me know. Because you, you sitting on my platform. If you're going to sit up here, you say amen. Amen. I mean that. I mean that because I told them today the leaders have to be with one accord. Praise the Lord. If you're going to lead and, uh, and, and, and have the privilege of, of serving in the church, you ought to at least say amen. amen. Because I'm telling the truth. The devil knows how to make wickedness look attractive. Oh, yeah. You can't drink from both tables. John, in our text, I'm preaching good. John adopted a us against them presentation. Because the truth is, saints, it is us and them. We are in a battle. Amen. I mean, let's face it. It's a contest. The world is trying to win you. And if not win you, silence you. And you, on the other hand, have got to say to the world, I will not sell out. And I will not be silenced. It is a battle. 
the lines are clearly drawn. The devil now is in the intimidating business. When they don't like what, what you stand for, they're going to boycott you. And, oh yeah, go to your house and make noise. That's to send a message to the rest of us. It is to say to the rest of us, you better be quiet. Oh, you better not say that because if you say something, they're going to come and they're going to march and they're going to protest. Right. Let me tell you something. Two, two can play that game. <laughs> Praise the Lord. You got to know as a believer that you are not the devil's victim. <laughs> say amen, somebody. Amen. Amen. Preached similar stuff similar to this when I was in Nashville. Preacher texted me last night, says, Man of God, I would love to mentor you and work with you that way. I said, Praise the Lord, son. Praise the Lord. Get that word in you. Be glad to help you. Praise the Lord as we fight this good fight of faith. Say amen. amen. John says, ye are of God. Ye are from God. Who is he talking to? He's speaking to his readers. He's speaking to the people who are part of the Jonaean congregation. He's preaching to those who stay. And didn't leave with the folk who departed in chapter 2 and verse 19. They went out from us. And when they went out, it showed that they were not of us. For had they been of us, they wouldn't have left us. John said to his readers, you are from God. Hallelujah. Little children. He gives them a term of endearment. Have overcome them. Who are the them? The them that he's referencing are the people spoken of in verse 1. First of all, first of all says, Beloved, believe not every spirit, uh, but try the spirits whether they are of God, because many false prophets are going out into the world. You have overcome. The false prophets. Praise the Lord. Their rhetoric didn't shake you. Praise the Lord. When they tried uh, to talk to you over the dinner table, they didn't prevail. When you finished that last phone call with them, you told them, don't call me back. So I'm not with that mess. They did not prevail. You overcame them. The them are those who, again, were part of the departure in verse 19. Because as they went, they tried to turn the hearts and the minds of others. I'm not going to let anybody talk me out of my Christianity. I don't care who it is. Praise the Lord. People can come and people can go. But I'm not going to let anyone talk me out of Jesus. I know in whom I believe. And I'll tell you something else I know. I know in the words of Job that my Redeemer liveth. Good, good God Almighty. Hallelujah. I know this. I know. So, so in your attempt to try to pour me out, that's a waste of time. I remember one day a Jehovah's Witness uh, tried to witness to me. I, I looked at him and I said, man, you, you, you don't know who you're talking to. I said, I am the tip of the spear for I believe God. I'm a Christian. I'm rooted and grounded in Christianity and you have no chance. I said, there's no point in wasting your time. You have no chance 
of dissuading me, you know, to persuade me to leave Christianity, to talk me out of the Lord. I said, man, you might as well go talk to somebody else. As a matter of fact, I thought I'd throw some questions at him that didn't line up with their little, uh, you know, they, they teaching route. You, if you break up their little, uh, you, you watch how material, you, you break up their little series of questions, you, you throw in something to kind of throw that off. Oh, man, they're like a computer where, where the, the, the thing don't work no more. <laughs> they got a glitch. I mean, you got them because they're taught in route. They, 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 their, their, their doctrine is A, B, C. Ask them this and ask them this and ask them this and ask them that. So I threw something in. I said, wait, 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 wait a minute. Who is Jesus? So now I'm not talking about according to your book, which is wrong, that says in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was a God. That, that, you, you're wrong there because the Bible said the beginning was the word, the word was with God and the word was God. So now I want to know who is Jesus. All right. See? That, they ain't programmed. See, the Bible says when you have the Holy Ghost, he'll tell you what to say. Don't you let anybody talk you out of what you know. Don't be moved by these people. I don't care if he's the coach of UNC. Duke. It can be the NCAA, ACC, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Doesn't make any difference. God made them male and God made them female and a male is a male is a male is a male and a male can never be anything other than a living male or a dead male but he's a male and males use the men's room And I don't care why you play your games. That's still true. And the same thing holds true with a female. She's a female. She's a female. Praise the Lord. And uh, let me tell you women something. You got to get riled up because as the people who believe that fake women are the same as real women, it makes life hard for real women. So you should be the one. You should be appalled that, that, that a man is standing there with a skirt on, swinging. That that man can call himself a woman, and you are and you are all right with that. I I thought that you felt that you were special. So one one time women did. One time women did. And I tell you something else. There was a time when the men thought that women were special, but. But seemed like the governor, the NAACP, and all them sisters in equality in North Carolina, they don't think that factory-made women are special. And they put up, they put up these, uh, uh, praise the Lord, fake women. Now, this is a, a, a man right here, a transgender woman. That's a man. Man with a wig on. Man with a shirt, a, a, a top on with shoulder pads. Still a man. And if you look at this picture, one thing he couldn't do, he couldn't hide them hands. This is a man. That's because it's a man. What, what am I doing? You know what I'm doing? I'm pushing back. Wouldn't, why do you spend so much time on this? Because I don't have much help. You know, if other preachers would help me. You know, it would help. It would, praise the Lord. It would help. So somebody's got to be equal time. Somebody's got to be the other side of the argument. I don't mind. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Because what's at stake? is our belief in the Bible. 
I believe in the word of God. And when, 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 when fake women are, are, are treated, I, I didn't say fake people, because everybody, they're all real people. They're all real people. Let me make that clear. They're all real people. I don't want you to leave. Pastor called some people. He was so mean calling people fake people. I didn't say fake people. But a transgendered woman is a fake woman because that's a man. And a transgendered man is a fake man because that's a woman. They're all real people, but they're fake men and they're fake women. Yes, sir. They're fake, 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 not real. Take that wig off. If you're fake, praise the Lord. Amen. Fake. Not real. Not real. Not real. Not real. Not real. The Bible is right. And so when as we let them get in our head, you got to overcome them. And uh, cause see now we see people with collars on. We see people who are preachers and, and bishops and uh, uh, religious muckety mucks arguing for this type of ungodliness and the only thing let me tell you what they're trying to do they're trying they don't care whether or not you agree with them the goal is to intimidate you to silence you and they've intimidated many of you you're scared to say amen you're hoping that the camera don't show you cameraman find somebody who looking scared no no don't do that <laughs> don't do that but they want to intimidate you and oh push you in the shadows, but my God, the Bible says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. My question is, whose report are you going to believe? We're going to believe the report of the Lord. And I got a question for you. Who's on the Lord's side? Whose side are you standing on? Somebody ought to shout, I'm standing on the Lord's side. Good God Almighty. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Grab somebody by the hand and say, overcome them. Overcome them. Don't let them get in your head. Don't let them make you doubt what you believe. I know what I believe. Yeah. I can tell when you're of God. First thing happens is, I'm out of time almost. You overcome them. Uh-huh. Them. Somebody say them. Another part of the them is the devil himself. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody shout, thank you, Jesus. It's the devil himself because the devil is at work. This is demonic activity. It's demonic activity with a, uh, a, 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 a nightly news endorsement. The Bible speaks of the God of this world. 2 Corinthians 4 and 4 says, In whom, well, verse 3 says, If our gospel be here. He there literally, if our gospel be misunderstood, then it is here to them that are lost. Well, why are they lost? In whom the God of this world, that's the devil, hath blinded the minds of them which believe not because they rejected God's truth. The devil blinded their minds. Lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ who is uh, the image of God should shine unto them. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and uh, ourselves, your servants, for Jesus' sake. For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, have shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of of the glory of God in the face of Jesus. That is as we have seen it in the face of Jesus Christ. You see the devil has blinded their minds and the devil is the energizing force behind much of what we see right now. But I thank God that every day we are overcoming the devil. Somebody shout glory. 
Ephesians 2 and 2 says, Wherein in times past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. Notice the devil is the prince of the power of the air. He's the spirit behind the children of disobedience. And God has given us power every day to overcome them. And thank God for overcoming power. How many are glad that you have overcoming power? That the devil has not come in and, and reshaped your thoughts and messed up your mind. But that you still believe the old time way. And you still know that the God of the Bible is God. If you believe it and you celebrate your belief, lift your hands and tell the Lord thank you. Those who will hear this by radio and television and my live crowd, tell God thank you because we're not going to let these people, we're not going to let these people get in our head and change our minds and have us looking askance at the Bible. No, sir. I love this book. It's the book of books. It's the most powerful book in existence. And I'm telling the devil right now, you're not going to get in my head. Somebody tell him thank you. He said, great. Say, you have overcome them. Why? Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Now notice, the he is unidentified. We're not told exactly what person of the Godhead that John was talking about. Whether it was the Father, the Son, or the Holy Ghost. But if you look at John chapter 3, verse 24, that may give us some idea. It says, and he uh, that keepeth us, he that keepeth his commandment, dwelleth in him. And he in him, that is, he that keeps Jesus' commandments, dwells in Christ, and Christ in him. And hereby we know that he abideth in us by the spirit which he hath given us. So the he that is in you that is greater than the he that is in the world is the Holy Ghost. When the Lord gives you the Holy Ghost, that might be the problem right there. Could be that not enough of us have been filled with the Holy Ghost. Every person in here ought to ask God to fill them with the Holy Spirit. Fill me till my hands look new. Fill me till I speak in other tongues. Fill me till you come alive in me. I need the Holy Ghost. See, the Holy Ghost will keep the devil from wearing you out. The Holy Ghost will give you power to wax valiant and fight. The longer you fight, the better you feel because you've been filled with the Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost gives you power to push back against the devil. The Holy Ghost gives you power to not be made a shame. The devil can call us crazy, lazy, homophobic, Islamophobic, xenophobic, and all of the rest of them. That's all right as long as the Lord look at me and call me well done. You can say whatever you want to say. I'm just glad that I got it like the Bible said. Somebody lift their hands and shout, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Good God Almighty, that word overcome is written in the, what is called the Aeroris tense, which means the battle goes on. I overcame him last time. I got to fight to overcome again and to overcome again. And just as the devil was after you yesterday, Satan will come after you tomorrow. But every time he tries to get in, you ought to tell him, Satan, you're the same devil that I said no to the last time. Well, I'm saying the same thing because the Bible hasn't changed and neither will I. Will somebody tell God, thank you. I'm going to stand on the word of God. I praise the Lord. You know, I, I got to, um, um, you, you, some of you, praise the Lord. I feel like I'm preaching 
uh, uh, bring me up right here. I'm preaching to a few uh, Presbyterians who, who might be a little stingy today uh, with their amens. Uh, so Rocky, uh, let's, let's go a little harder. Thank you, Jesus. So he said here, he said, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Now he moves from the, from, from the, from the congregation and then he points to the enemy. He said, they, who are the they? He said, they, the antichrist, they, the false teachers, the false prophets, the people in verse one, the people in two and 19, they, notice where they get their, their origins from. Notice where they get their power from and their philosophy. They are of the world. Look at this in verse four. He says, you are of God. Our power comes from God. Our philosophy comes from the Lord. Good God Almighty, our anointing comes from the Lord. But the false prophets, they get theirs from the world. They are of the world. They are of the world. Therefore speak they of the world. The world may not be their subject, but the world is where they get their philosophy from. That's why they recommend, they recommend meditation. They recommend yoga. They recommend everything but prayer. They recommend sports. They recommend entertainment. They recommend everything but coming down to the altar and getting washed in the blood of Jesus because their source is the world. But we get ours from the word. We get ours from the Bible. And if they don't move, we ought not either. Thank you, Jesus. My philosophy comes from the scriptures. How many of you, you can say, I get mine from the word of God. Praise the Lord. I hope you enjoyed the message. I hope you were blessed by the word of the Lord. Now, let me see. You have time to get here, to join us today for our Easter Sunday's 11 a.m. celebration. And look, come out. Don't worry about uh, clothing. You know, one of the traditions on Easter is that people wear the new suits and the, the new outfits and whatnot. Look, God wants to see you. We want to see you. Come and be blessed of the Lord. We're going to celebrate the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Woo! Praise the Lord. I feel the power moving. Come and be with us. God bless you. Thank you for watching. Thank you for watching God First with Bishop Patrick L. Wooden Sr. and the Upper Room Church of God in Christ. To experience this message in its entirety, call 877-463-3477 to purchase a DVD or CD. God First will return next week at the same time. Until then, make every day a God First day. God First.